turning to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 27, 14, 22 to 27. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Father, we are grateful to you for your word. We pray that you will speak into our life. Revive us, rejuvenate us, restore us. Do a greater, deeper work in each and every one of us. Speak into our life, life giving words. Thank you, Lord. Every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind them in Jesus' name and we take victory here. To Christ be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Today's message is titled, Cheer Up, No Need to Fear. Cheer Up, No Need to Fear. If you are a human being, you are not immune from fear. We all would like to be fearless, but quite often we are fearful. We have so many promises in God's word which assures us and tells us not to fear yet. We become fearful in life. The journey in life is such that even when we are obedient, even when we are in the will of God, even when we are doing what God wants us to do, fear can creep into our lives. You and I as believers, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit who, as the Bible says, is a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. And before telling us that it is a spirit of love, power, and sound mind, Paul, writing to Timothy, says, there is no need to fear. Yet, as human beings, we fear, don't we? The psalmist David wrote like this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? But the same psalmist David says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. So there are seasons in everyone's life, including David, who was a giant killer, where fear crept into his life. The anointing is upon his head. The promise of being the king is upon him. Yet, he was fearful at one stage of his life. If that's the case, then you and I also can find ourselves in a place in a season where fear tend to knock at our doors. And fear has the potential to paralyze us. Fear has the potential to spread around us. Sometimes we get fearful because this can be contagious. Depending on who you live with, who you hang out with, who you move in with. This fear can spread into our life as well. Praise the Lord. 
Here, the Bible we see as this particular portion opens up before us. After a great success, Jesus kind of presses his disciples to get on the boat and go to the other side. And he tells the multitude to go away. And Jesus climbs up on the mountain and he's in prayer. This is evening time, so you can imagine it's probably six. The disciples are on the boat. They are rowing in the boat. But Jesus is up on the mountain. And as they row and as they get to the middle of the sea, we see the Bible says the wind was contrary to them. The wind can enable us. The wind can help us. The wind can push us into our destination. But at times, the wind can blow against us, contrary to our passage, making it hard for us to reach the destiny. And quite often, in this journey, there will be wind and waves that can come against us, bringing in fear. Look, they are in the middle of the sea. And they cannot go any further. They are not on a speedboat. They are not on a sailboat. They are on a rowboat. But they can press on because the further they want to go, they can't. They are being pushed backwards. Have you ever been in such life experience where every step that you try to put ahead you find yourself either you are back on square A or you are being pushed backwards. The more energy you employ to move forward, it seems there are forces that are pushing you backwards. Praise the Lord. The disciples find themselves in such a predicament. What does the Bible teach us? The Bible teaches us that just because we are the followers of Jesus Christ, you are I, you and I are not exempt or immune from the waves and wind that come contrary to our momentum in life. Praise the Lord. What does the Bible teach us? It teaches us that the wind and waves can come abruptly when we are least expecting it in our life. Praise the Lord. When the wind and waves come against our lives, what does it do? It shakes up. It rocks our boat. It rocks our status quo. It yanks us out of our comfort zone. It makes us very un uncomfortable. It is at such moments in our lives when fear takes a hold of our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, fear can creep into any one of our life. The interesting thing is here, this wind and the waves are coming upon these disciples who were obedient to the voice of the master. Sometimes we have this feeling that just because we are obedient or following the command of the Lord, you and I will not encounter issues in our lives. Praise the Lord. That should be taken out of our life because Jesus said, in this world, you have trouble, tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. As long as we are in this world, the winds and the waves of this world will come against us. Praise the Lord. Rocking our boat, sometimes even shattering our dreams. Praise the Lord. This is what God's word reminds us. The interesting thing is, 
these disciples, they are in the will of God because they have simply obeyed what Jesus told them. So, being in the will of God does not mean that we will be exempt or immune from the storms that brew against our life. Praise the Lord. The disciples did not get into this predicament by themselves, but Jesus kind of ushered them to go to the other side. And in the course of this God-ordered journey, God-ordained journey, praise the Lord, they find themselves in the middle of storm. Praise the Lord. Why is it that even when we are in the will of God and obedient to the Lord, we can find ourselves in the middle of a tempest? Praise the Lord. As at times, God wants us to make us strong in our faith. Praise the Lord. You know, when you read the Gospels, you see that at one time, when they had the same kind of storm, at that particular time, Jesus was in the boat with them, sleeping in the boat. But here, Jesus is not with them, praise the Lord. So, Jesus was kind of giving them this training in our lifetime, praise the Lord. There are times where we have to hold fast to the promises of God, to the word of God. The disciples had learned a lesson. As long as Jesus was in the boat, the boat will not go down. But this was another lesson that they were learning. Praise the Lord. As long as they were following, praise the Lord, the command of the Lord, the Lord can sustain them. Praise the Lord. The disciples were being trained and groomed and mentored because Jesus, the physical presence of Jesus, would depart from them after some time. And these were guys who were supposed to go to the ends of the earth. And they had to learn a lesson that if Jesus told them something to do, they do it and God will have them covered. Praise the Lord. Being in the will of God at times means we have to become people who take risk. Praise the Lord. We have to become people who take risk. Praise the Lord. Look at the life of the disciples. After the ascension of Jesus, once these guys moved into the field, every one of them took risk. Great risk with their lives. Praise the Lord. They, what did they hold on to? They hold on to the, the promise that God gave them. Praise the Lord. You could be in the will of God. As you are in the will of God, make sure you learn to hold fast to the promises of God. The promises of God will carry us through. Praise the Lord. The promises of God will pump fresh energy into us. The promises of God will pump new insights into our lives. The promises of God will boost us to move forward in the will of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We see that their faith was also being tested. Praise the Lord. Mark in his narration of the same thing says, Jesus saw them being buffeted by the, by the wind and the waves. Yet he decided to do what? Wait it out. Praise the Lord. Jesus saw them. But he waited till the fourth watch of the night. Sometimes, if there is anyone here in this house who feels that you have gone through the tempest and storms of life for quite some time and you're getting tired of it, praise the Lord. And you feel that the heaven is shut. You feel that there is no response from heaven. You feel that it seems as if God doesn't care. 
The lesson is hold on. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't fret. Don't panic. Praise the Lord. He will come through for you at the right moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In a day and age when no one wants to take a risk. Imagine if you are on a flight ready to take off. And the pilot gets the information that there is a storm brewing in any of its pathway. What does the pilot do? Most of the time they wait for the storm to pass by. If you are in a ship, they will make sure that they try to avoid that. Praise the Lord. But at times, you can't avoid it. You could find yourself in the eye of the storm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But regardless of what, one thing is sure. If you are making this journey because Jesus has said so, you will make it through. Now, the interesting thing is the Bible says Jesus goes up on the mountain and he is praying. From that vantage point on the hillside, Jesus can see the disciples in the middle of the sea. Afraid, tired, being tossed to and fro. Listen, what is Jesus doing? Jesus is praying. Praise the Lord. Jesus is praying. What are the disciples doing? They are fearful. They are trying, they are attempting everything in their book to get by, to go over to the other side. The one that commissioned them to go to the other side is praying. But quite often, people who take the bidding from the Lord, people who listen to the commission and obey the commission, do not find time to pray. How often people venture out into ministry without prayer. Praise the Lord. Jesus is praying. But these brothers, the disciples who are following the instruction of Jesus, do we know if they prayed? I don't know. Praise the Lord. But it tells us that all of us who are involved in doing the will of the Father should immerse ourselves and all of our activities and ministry in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? I will tell you. Prayerlessness in our life can sap our inner strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayerlessness in our lives can make us ineffective in the ventures and the endeavor that we undertake for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So whether you are leading a class, whether you are teaching a Sunday school, or you are preaching, or you are our worship leader, or a song leader, whatever you are doing, Immerse your ministry in prayer. Praise the Lord. We take so much time for planning. Very little time for praying. Praise the Lord. We get so busy with the talk of ministry. But we hardly linger in the presence of God. Regardless of what arena you are serving the Lord. Make sure you take Time to pray. How do you learn? Where do you learn that from? Look at Jesus. Praise the Lord. As busy as he was, as effective as he was, as much as he was always in the will of God, he always took time out, took time off, took time away to spend time in prayer. My friend, praise the Lord. Regardless of what ministry you are doing, take time to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we don't take time to pray, we can do a lot of things, but we'll find ourselves in effect. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus took 
time to pray. Now, listen. If you're spearheading any organization, if you're spearheading any department, if you're in any leadership role, let me ask you, my brother, my sister, do you spend time in prayer for those you are ministering to? One day I walked into a class and I surprised the teacher in there. The teacher looked at me and said, today I'm going to wing it. I said, okay, you can wing it today. We are going to, are we going to wing it? Praise the Lord, that's not what we're going to do. If we spend time with the Lord, Praise the Lord. There will be no need to wing it. Praise God. So whoever you're ministering to, make sure that you pray for them. Praise the Lord. Now, the church, those who are ministering to you, those who are serving for you, do you spend time in praying for them? Do you spend time in praying for your teachers? The preacher, the pastor, the ministerial team. Do you pray for them? We ought to cover everyone in prayer. We ought to cover those who are in administration in prayer. Praise the Lord. We ought to cover each other in prayer. We have to, we need each other's prayer back up. Praise the Lord. Jesus was up there praying and watching them. Praise the Lord. Jesus is still up there and he's interceding for you and for me. But having been a Christian for such a long time, has his trait, habit rubbed off on you and me? Do we spend time in interceding for our brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord? Do we intercede for the issues of life? Do you intercede for what matters in life of God's people? Praise. Jesus found time to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we don't take time to pray, we would not have the clarity that we need in discerning the will of God. Remember, these guys were in the will of God. Praise the Lord. If we do not bathe ourselves in prayer, we will not have the clarity that we need to discern the will of God. Praise the Lord. In every phase of our lives, we have to discern the will of God. And it's not very easy. It doesn't come very easy. We have to be conditioning our mind and our thoughts with prayer and praise. That's when we get the clarity that we need to press on with the things of life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What what do we need to press on in this journey? We need faith in the Lord Jesus Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Without faith. Faith in what? Faith in what he has said. Faith in the word that he has given us. Faith in the instruction he has given us. Faith in the command that he has given us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Without faith, we will falter in our lives. Praise the Lord. Look at these guys. We see... That Jesus, at the fourth watch of the night, started coming towards them. And Jesus started walking on the sea. Praise the Lord. The disciples saw him and thought that he's a ghost. Praise God. They started crying, and the Bible says they were fearful and they started to cry. How long they've been hanging around with Jesus. But when Jesus presented to them in an unfamiliar setting, they could not recognize him. 
Praise the Lord. The aid, the deliverance, the way out from our predicament when it is presented to us in an unfamiliar way, are we able to accept it? These guys thought that this is a ghost, praise the Lord, because not in their wildest imagination they could, they could think that Jesus could actually walk on the sea and come to them. So they thought he's a ghost and they cried out. You know, in the New Testament, there is another group of people who thought that there was a ghost knocking at the door. Do you remember who it is? It's recorded in Acts chapter 12. Praise the Lord. The church is praying for Peter's release. And God does a miracle for them. And God answers their prayer and their prayer is knocking at their door. When the prayer is knocking at the door, one person out of that prayer meeting, her name is Rhoda. She, without even seeing, making an eye contact, just knocked at the door and the voice of Peter. She recognized and she makes a proclamation, Peter is at the door. In other words, the answer to the prayer is at the door. Do you know what the church said? The church said, no way, it's a ghost. Praise the Lord. Good they didn't call for the ghostbusters. Praise God. But when you are in the middle of the ocean, who can you call? Sometimes we can be in the middle of the sea and there is no one to call. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, even when there is no one to call who can come to your physical aid, praise God. Jesus can show up for you in a way that you are not expecting him. Praise the Lord. Unexpected ways of God. Unexpected times of God. Unexpected manner of God coming through for us can catch us off God. Let me ask you. Can you look into your life and find how God has come to your aid in an unexpected way? At the least expected time? I believe that there are so many of us seated here who have life experience where you can say, God came through for me in an unexpected time, in an unexpected manner when I was least expecting him to come through. Let me ask you, that episode in your life, has it made you stronger Christian? Has it made you trust in the Lord? Has it made you bring both in a resolve in your life that you're willing to go all the way and take any risk for the sake of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus comes to them walking on the sea. Isn't it marvelous? Every time I ponder on this passage, I cannot but think that the very thing that wanted to gobble them, the very thing that wanted to swallow them, the very thing that wanted to just take over them, Jesus walked on it. Praise the Lord. Our problems at times can be so big. It could be life-threatening. It would, it can be intimidating. But let me tell you, Jesus can make that a vehicle, a transport to come to you and to your aid. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The presence of Jesus was misinterpreted as a ghost. Let me tell you, you and I should be in a place where we are able to discern when God is working on our behalf. And if that has to happen, you and I should be people who spend time in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, as Jesus comes to them and they, they cry out to him, what is Jesus telling them? Take courage. Be of good cheer. It is I don't be afraid. This 
morning, that's what the Lord wants to tell anyone who is going through a fearful roller coaster experience in your life. Praise the Lord. Cheer up. It's I. You don't need to be afraid. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, when we trust him and trust his word, it can instill within us, praise God, what? A fresh faith. Praise the Lord. That will enable us to stand firm and press on with the plan of God for our life. Praise the Lord. By telling his disciple, it is I, do not be afraid. Jesus was identifying himself as the great I am. He comes to his followers in the storms of life to remind them that he is the great I. Praise the Lord, the one who can make a difference in your life. Who can still the winds and waves of our lives. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you, do you have a personal relationship with this Jesus? Are you in life's journey because you have listened to his command? And in this life journey, are you being tossed to and fro by the wind and the waves of this world? Praise the Lord. Are you ready to give up, throw in the towel and call it quits? Jesus can come to your aid and still praise the Lord, the winds and the waves that want to intimidate you and to bring you down. Praise God. Look at the response of this disciples. Their first response was they cried out. Praise God. Jesus says, hey, be cheerful. Do not be afraid. It's me. Praise God. How do we respond to the word of God? How do we respond to the presence of Christ? How do we respond to the promises of God? It is very important that we respond to him in a positive way. If we want to experience the bliss and the tranquility that his presence can give us in our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we want to experience that bliss and the tranquility that Jesus can bring in our lives, it's important that we respond to him in a positive way. Praise the Lord. When Jesus tells them, it is I, praise God. One portion, the other gospel writer says, Jesus <laughs> enters into the boat and the wind and the wave dies. And they reach the other shore. Praise the Lord. Would you allow him entrance into your boat? Praise the Lord. Would you allow Jesus to enter into the life issues of life? Praise the Lord. Listen, at times we think that by our strength we can manage things. Praise the Lord. We think by our strength, our physical strength, we can manage every issues of life. Quite often when we are in the middle of the storm, that's when we realize that we don't have the inner strength that we need, praise God, to tackle the storm. Quite often, we think that we can handle everything by our manpower, our muscle power, our money power, our machine power. Praise God. But what we need when we go through the storms of life is an inner strength. And that inner strength can only come when we are linked with the source of strength, Jesus Christ. Quite often, when we are doing fine in one area of our life, the storm might not hit where you are strong, but where you are weak. Relationally, you might be strong, but the hit might come in an emotional area where you are weak. Or financially you might be strong and the hit might come in a relational arena of your life. 
Praise the Lord. See, we have different arenas of our lives. And just because we are doing well, fine in one area of our life, doesn't mean that the storm can rock the other areas of our life. Regardless of what area the storm is landing in, you and I need the inner strength to override the storm. And that is only possible, one, by spending time with him. Number two, <laughs> believing in the promises of God. Praise God. <laughs> Holding fast to the promise in the middle of the storm. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> Giving access to Jesus in any and every arena of your life can bring the calmness of his presence in any areas of our lives. Praise the Lord. Where are you facing the storm <laughs> this morning? Is it in your financial area? Is it in your emotional area? Is it in your relational area? Is that in your vocational area? Regardless of what arena it is, Jesus can bring calmness to your life. He's telling this morning, be of good cheer, for it is I do not be afraid. Praise the Lord. Jesus can come to you, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and minister to your need, praise the Lord. Each deliverance from God is a custom cut deliverance that is cut out for you specifically, praise the Lord. Every one of us has a unique identity. Every one of us has unique challenges in life. Every one of us has a unique, praise God, battle in life. But let me tell you, every one of us have a personal relationship with Jesus. And because we have a personal relationship with Jesus, the kind of resolution, the kind of solution and deliverance that Jesus can bring Bring to your life can be one of a kind. Praise the Lord. A unique one that is cut out to you, cut out for your sake. Praise the Lord. Can you trust him that he will come through for you in a way that he has not come through for anyone else? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? As I want the choir to come up for a minute. Please come up. And I want you to sing that song. When the ocean rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you about the storm. Praise the Lord. The storms of life can come any moment. But the songwriter says, when it does come, I will Ride the storms of life. Hide me now under your wings. Cover me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When all eyes are closed, I want you to ponder on the goodness of God. The Lord's promises, cheer up. It's I. You don't need to be Afraid. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Under your Amen. 